Football Friday, Super Bowl Friday, Big Sills National Football Show. Here it is. Here it is, baby. Rent's due. Rent is due. No more BS. Prognosticating, whatever. It's about showing up and playing 60. Here we go, baby. This is for everything. You know, I predicted that the Eagles on May 10th of 2022 would make the game. I didn't realize they could actually win the game. We're going to get to that. By the way, bottom of the hour, Joe Theismann, former Super Bowl MVP, two-time Super Bowl appearance, winning one of those. We will talk with Joe Theismann. That'll be at the bottom of the hour. I want to ask you something going into the weekend and getting ready for Super Bowl 57. What's your take on the Eagle defense? I posted this on my Twitter page. I'm going to read something to you here, and you tell me what you take away from this. Since week five of the NFL, here are the quarterbacks that the Eagle defense have played against. And you tell me if the Eagles' defense is overrated or not challenged. This counts the playoffs. Since week five, Josh Johnson, Brock Purdy, 49ers, Daniel Jones, New York Giants, Davis Webb, New York Giants. Andy Dalton, New Orleans Saints. Jack Prescott, Dallas Cowboys. Justin Fields, Chicago Bears. Daniel Jones, New York Giants. Ryan Tannehill, Tennessee Titans. Aaron Rodgers, okay, Green Bay. Matt Ryan, Indianapolis Colts. Tyler Heineke, Washington Commanders. David Mills, Houston Texans. Kenny Pickett, Pittsburgh Steelers. Cooper Rush. Dallas Cowboys, and Kyler Murray, Arizona Cardinals. This has to be the worst group and names of quarterbacks outside of Aaron Rodgers any Super Bowl contending team has ever faced. Josh Johnson, Brock Purdy, Daniel Jones, Davis Webb, Andy Dalton, Dak Prescott, Justin Fields, Daniel Jones, Tannehill, Rodgers, okay, Aaron Rodgers, Matt Ryan, Tyler Heineke, David Mills, Kenny Pickett, Cooper Rush, and Kyler Murray. These are bums. (laughs) These are bums but one. How am I supposed to look at the Eagle defense and go, this is one of the greatest units of all time. And when I look at these guys, it's easily one of the worst lists of quarterbacks any Super Bowl team has ever faced. This is terrible. So how am I supposed to, how do I define the Eagle defense? They had a bunch of sacks against shitty teams. Okay. The 49er O-line, very good. The Giant O-line, terrible. New Orleans O-line, terrible. Dallas's O-line, pretty good. Chicago, terrible. (laughs) Giants, terrible. Tennessee, terrible. Green Bay, decent. Indianapolis, terrible. Washington, terrible. Houston, terrible. Pittsburgh, terrible. Dallas, okay. Phoenix, terrible. They didn't play against one good line this year, except maybe the Cowboys. 
And the only quarterback they played this year that's worth the shit on this list is Aaron Rodgers. How am I supposed to evaluate the Eagle defense and go, these guys are great, when quite frankly, this is a roster of horrible O-lines and horrible coaches and horrible quarterbacks. This is a fact. This is since week five counting the playoffs. How do I look at the Eagle defense? Is it overrated? I think the Eagle defense is a little overrated. You can't. Now, I'll tell you this. This Super Bowl will define them. This Super Bowl will define, validate, or tell us they were overrated when that game ends on Sunday. Is that fair? This game on Sunday is either going to validate the Eagle defense or what it's going to do, it's going to tell us it was overrated. Is that fair? Because if they kill Patrick Mahomes and they kill Andy Reid and they take that team apart, it really doesn't matter what this list says. They took down the the MVP, who was just named that last night, right? This is going to validate this defense or not. Super Bowl 57 will tell us really who the Eagle defense is because, dude, when I read a name like David Mills and Davis Webb and guys like this, I don't know what to think of the Eagle defense. I don't. This is, you've played nobody. This is a list of nobodies. Am I wrong? Your, your stats are overhyped and overrated. But come Sunday, you could validate yourself. Dude, we were this team the whole year. We are this team. You beat Patrick Mahomes, no one's going to remember in three years. They're just going to remember the statistics and what you did and your record. If Patrick Mahomes takes this Eagle defense apart, and he's capable of, Taking this defense apart. I told you this before. A lot of good quarterbacks, man, have high percentages against Jonathan Gannon. Jonathan Gannon versus Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes? I don't know. N91 goes back on this again. No, I'm just asking you a question. Do you think this is impressive? Are you really impressed with the Eagle defense when you look at Josh Johnson, Brock Purdy, Daniel Jones, Davis Webb, Andy Dalton, Ryan Tannehill, Matt Ryan, Tyler Heineke, Davis Davis Mills, Kenny Pickett, Cooper Rush. Are you impressed with that? I'm not. GT goes, you guys lost to Jimmy Garoppolo last year. You never beat Garoppolo. Okay, right. Aaron Rodgers, GT, I give it to you. Tell me, wait, don't attack me. Ask yourself what that list tells you. Don't aim this at me. Aim this at the question, are the Eagles overrated on defense? Okay? And I'm not talking about Kansas City. I think Kansas City is overrated on defense too. I personally don't think they're that good. I think, watch this. I think their corners are decent for rookies. And I think Chris Jones is great. The rest of them, they got a linebacker that's decent. And the rest of them, the kid from Purdue could be a player. But nobody on that. Dude, the 49er defense is better. So don't sit there and say, are you saying that Kansas Kansas City's defense? I'm not impressed with them. Will you see what they did against the Bengals' run game? And 
They had three substitute teachers in the offensive line. I'm not impressed with anything they did stopping the run against Cincinnati. Hang on. Don't aim this at me. I'm asking you. When you see this list, are the Eagle defensive guys overrated? Or do you think they're just not been challenged? What? How do you look at this? There's no way you think this is impressive. Going into this game, you guys are always telling me, Sills, don't look at the numbers. Well, shit, if you look at the numbers, you would think the Eagles were one of the best defenses in the league. When you look at who they played, if you play 25 tomato cans and call yourself the best, that's like somebody telling me, hey, Sills, that team that was undefeated in the Pac-12, really a great team. You put them in the SEC, they're an eight-win team. You think USC could hang in the Southeastern Conference? Do you know how many games SC would win in the, in the SEC? Do you know how many? Eight tops. Eight. They'd struggle with Vanderbilt. I mean, Kentucky would beat them. One more time. You tell me. Give me a definition of the Eagle defense. You're right, it's not college mayhem. In college, there's better quarterback play. Josh Johnson, Brock Purdy, Daniel Jones, Davis Webb, Andy Dalton, Justin Fields, Ryan Tannehill, Matt Ryan, Tyler Heineke. These are the guys you've played since week five. How am I supposed to sit here and think you got a good defense when you give me a list of turd quarterbacks? <laughs> Dude, Patrick Mahomes is a whole different guy than these dudes. Patrick Mahomes. Holy cow. <laughs> Man. Wait until someone gets Fields running the RPO. Damon, he's got to figure out whether or not he can understand the passing game because he ain't that hot at it. So are we not supposed to be at them? No, Kayvon, I'm asking you a question about your Eagle defense. I know you, you have to play who's in front of you. Duh. Do you think they're overhyped going into the game? That's why no one respects it. Do you understand why the wide receiver for the 49ers is talking trash on the Eagle defense? Because they haven't played anybody. And for the record, I don't give a shit what media guy in Philly tells you. You did not kill the Niners. The Niners killed themselves. And Hassan Reddick wrecked the game. Hassan Reddick has been the best Eagle player along with the offensive line for the Eagles in the playoffs. I mean, your playoff run is Daniel Jones and Christian McCaffrey running the Wildcat. <laughs> Not really the biggest test on the planet. I've never seen a quarterback play shitty in an NFC title game and they win it anyway comfortably. I've never seen that. I've never seen it. Again, I'm going to tell you what I think happens in the game. And I think you'll understand where I'm, I'm asking a question. So when I give you my prediction here in a second, what I think happens, you'll understand where I'm coming from here. V goes, Chiefs are going to choke. V, I'm going to get to them in a minute. I don't think they're that hot. Okay, I don't think they're that hot. Okay? Okay, Eagles didn't kill the 49ers, but they got destroyed. Yeah, nothing the quarterback did. He was terrible. Reddick plays on, hey, like I said, they held you to 93 yards passing. They didn't really have to beat you're going to need more from Jalen Hurts to beat the Eagle, uh, to beat the Chiefs on Sunday than 133 passing. I disagree with Seth. 
you're going to need more than 133 passing. Okay? And 49 yards or 39 yards rushing. You're going to need more from him. You're not going to beat the Chiefs with that kind of performance. You're not. Okay? Tell me, again, don't aim this at me. I'm asking you what your take is on who they've played since week five. On if the defense is overrated or underrated. You tell me. It's a question. Okay? Terrible leader. You completely suck, Cilio. And Philly demands a trade. (laughs) Seals, I promise you, Jalen Hurts can pass for only 120 yards and rush for 40, and the Eagles still handle the Kansas City Chiefs. Maybe. Maybe. Eagles defense is not overrated. How can you tell? Hey, the real, how can you tell? Where? Who made you think that? And with some of the quarterbacks that were in some of the offenses that were in the top five and in the upper echelon, they put 30 on you. I mean, Dak Prescott put 40 on you and a 124 quarterback rating and 77% completion percentage. Shit, Matt Ryan had a good game. The Eagles are legit, big sales. I'm not, I'm asking you what you think of who they've faced this year. What do you, you don't think any of those numbers make those Eagle players look a better when you're look a little better when you're playing bums like this. Okay. I think you're going in there with your head in the sand. There's nobody redeeming on that list that makes me go like this since week five. Wow. They were challenged. No, no quarterback. That's why Jonathan Gannon could play that soft ass defense. You know why? David Mills is not going to beat him. Um, Davis Webb is not going to beat him. Josh Johnson's not going to beat him. Tyler Heineke. Well, he did. Davis Mills is not going to beat. Kenny Pickett. Cooper, these guys are not going to beat a defense. Because they're going to make mistakes in the game. I'm not blaming it on the schedule, V. V, I know the schedule's set by the league. I'm not saying that. I'm saying and asking you, do you think some of those numbers that the Eagles defense has put up this year have been a little empty calories. How can you not think that when you're playing Davis Webb, Daniel Jones, Brock Purdy, and Josh Johnson? That's just been in the last four weeks. How can how can you not look at that and go, you're right? I think that's why some of the people are looking at the game being a little closer, especially the guys in Vegas. Quan goes 16 and one. Well, shit, man. You don't get kudos for going 16 and one versus Davis Mills and 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 Davis Webb and and and, and Kenny Pickett and Cooper Rush. You don't get merit badges for that. You don't get merit badges for that, dude. You're supposed to beat shitty guys like that. Get no merit badges. Xander's like, Xander's telling me this though, too. He goes, hey, Patrick Mahomes on Sunday, man. Xander's like, we play total stiffs quarterbacks, and Mahomes is a beast. That's what Xander was saying before we went on. He's like, this, he's like, this different. Dude, he's a completely different guy than every guy on this list, including Aaron Rodgers. So You know, maybe that point spread is right. Maybe that point spread is right. Bottom of the hour. We're going to talk to Joe Theismann, former NFL MVP and also Super Bowl champion and the owner of two NFC titles. I'll say this to you, though. One thing about this Eagle team that I've noticed that 
maybe in all the years covering it and having played against a couple of them, I would say this to you. This has got to be one of the most beloved Eagle teams of all time. City has embraced this team like no one's business. And for a team that hasn't won anything yet, well, they've won an NFC championship. That's not fair. For them winning an NFC championship and being very young in the process, team's not young. We'll find out how young the team will be next year because there's only four guys under contract on offense, let alone the fact that you got an entire secondary to have to re retool. Um, we'll see what that team looks like. But this team's well-loved, man. And I do agree with you, Roland. I think it's got a lot to do with Jalen Hurts. I do. I think it's got a lot to do with that. All right. What happens on Super Bowl Sunday and in Super Bowl 57? I know the point spread is like two and a half. Here's my take on this. This is going to come down to what we said yesterday. Can, can the Chiefs all defensive line and Chris Jones create pressure? And can they stop the Eagle run game? I don't think they can. I don't think they can. I think Philadelphia is going to run the ball, run the ball, and I think they're going to run it until Kansas City shows they can stop it. And for me, I'm going to tell you who I think the MVP of the game is here in a second. They're going to run it. They're going to run it. And then in the second half, I think A.J. Brown has a big half because they're going to have to bring people up to try to stop the run. They're going to loosen them up in the first half with Goddard and Sanders, and they're going to run it. Jalen's going to be part of the RPO. They're going to run it. And I'm going to make a prediction here on this. If the Philadelphia Eagles have four 10-plus play drives in this game, this game will not be close because you're keeping Kansas City on the, feet, on the sidelines and off the field. I don't think they have the personnel in Kansas City's defense. Spagnuolo is a good coordinator. But if you don't have the Jimmys and Joes, there's no honey badger back there in the safety position. You got a linebacker that's pretty good. Like I said, the kid from Purdue, the rookie, you got two rookie corners and you got two 1,000 yard wide receivers. You got a tight end that possibly could have had 1,000 yards. You don't have a linebacker in the group that can cover Dallas Goddard. I think AJ Brown's going to be your Super Bowl MVP. I think the Eagles win 31 17. I don't see it. I don't see it. Who's going to step? Here's what I do to Kelsey. If I'm Jonathan Gannon, I kick the living shit out of Travis Kelsey. Don't let Kelsey beat you. Beat him up. Put a guy on him. Double team him. Juju Smith-Schuster is going to beat you? Really? I'll take that gamble. I'll take that gamble. Juju Smith-Schuster beating me versus Travis Kelsey. Common sense. Double team him. Run games at him. Chip, bang on him. Don't let him free release. Don't let Travis Kelsey get free release. He'll have 200 yards on you. That guy can beat you. That guy can beat you. Bang on him. Who's the other guys? There's like a bunch of like dudes. The running backs. Here's something else you're going to have to keep an eye on early in the game. Delayed screens. They're going to screen you to death to try to slow the pass rush down. You're going to see a ton of screens. I wouldn't doubt if they opened the game with a screen. Okay? I, I would not doubt that they opened the game with middle screens, delayed screens, passes to the running backs, because they really... They use their running backs like Dallas uses Tony Pollard. They can put him in the slot. They flank him out wide. They have block and release. They have a lot of that. My opinion, you're going to see a lot of that early. Okay? And that's why Gannon is going to probably stay back in a soft zone. He's going to stay. You might need a soft zone here. But the issue becomes this. And I'm going to say one more time here. 
I think Patrick Mahomes throws for about 350 yards, but here's going to be the kryptonite to the Chiefs. Remember I said to Xander, here's the kryptonite. Once you get into the red zone, who's the guy? You got a 12th defender, which is the back of the end zone, and the only guy you have that's a mismatch is Kelsey. You block Kelsey, you don't have a running game. What are you doing in the red zone? I guarantee you, you're going to see a couple stalls. Kansas City's going to go crazy from 20 to 20, I think. Because Mahomes is going to have a high completion percentage. But once they get into the red zone, Eagles are going to stop them. They're going to stop them. I just don't think Kansas City, watch this. Who's got the better wideouts? Eagles. Who's got the better tight end? Kelsey. But I'm okay with my guy. Who's got the more experienced corners? Eagles. You got two rookies. Shit, who's got the better linebackers? And I've been hard on the linebackers this year. The Eagles. Who's got the better old line? That's not a question. It's one of the greatest old lines in NFL history. You got three Hall of Famers in that line. Two Hall of Famers. Shit, the 17 team had three with Lane, Kelsey, and the guy playing left tackle. Now you got two. And two Pro Bowlers. Jason Peters was on that 17 team. He's going to Hall of Fame too. How does Mahomes beat you? By the way, if I'm Jonathan Gannon, I, I'd line up Hassan Reddick over the weakest links and let him just go. I don't think I think Orlando Brown's overrated. He's not Trent Williams. I'll say it one more time. I told Xander this a couple minutes ago. Kansas City doesn't have the personnel that San Francisco does. San Francisco's got an elite linebacker, an elite D lineman, an elite safety. They're good all over the place. Offensively, it's littered with great players. Ayuk's even good. Debo, Chris McCaffrey, Kittle. Shit, the fullback's a pro bowler. The, the, the left tackle's the best in the game. You're telling me Kansas City has anything like that. And then let's go into the coaching. So you really think that Andy Reid and the Chiefs have the advantage over Nick Sirianni's guys? How many people think that? How many people think Andy Reid's got the advantage over Sirianni and the Eagle coaching staff? How many people think that? Well, let me just bring some context to you. What happened in 17 with Doug Peterson out coached Bill Belichick and Nick Foles outplayed Tom Brady? Who had the coaching advantage supposedly in that game? Hey, Brian, who had the coaching advantage in 17? Wasn't it Belichick? Wasn't it Brady? Eagles beat the shit out of the Patriots. That shit about Super Bowl experience is overhyped. Buffalo Bills back in the day had gone to all those Super Bowls. Dallas Cowboys were the youngest team in the NFL. They beat the living shit out of the Bills. With a college coach. You're trying to tell me that Marv Levy, who's a Hall of Fame coach himself, Jim Kelly, all those guys, all that experience in the Super Bowl, they got taken to the woodshed. Well, talk to me about experience in the game. On Sunday, that shit doesn't matter. The Jimmys and Joes. The better roster matters. Don't turn the ball over. That's something the Eagles are great. The one thing that Philly has been spectacular at this year is not turning the ball over. They've been spectacular at that. You know, what's, you know what? I say this to you all the time about this Eagle offense. It's not really a sensational offense. It's kind of boring. Okay? It's kind of boring. It's not flashy. It's just not. You know why? They don't have high percentage turnover plays. They refuse to put themselves in that position. Here, and I said this to you, and I made this comparison before to you. Okay? They're like Emmett Smith. Emmett wasn't flashy. 
he was just the all-time leading rusher in the history of the NFL. Barry Sanders was the flashy one. He was the guy that broke off an 85-yard run. Not, not, not Emmett. Emmett's the guy that gave you the positive yardage all the time. That's why when you look at Jalen, Jalen's not sensational when he plays. He's efficient. Doesn't turn the ball over. Doesn't make the dumb play. Jalen Hurts does more of this, not making the bad play, than any other quarterback in the league. That's why you're in the Super Bowl. You're in the Super Bowl because that guy does not turn the ball over. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. There, there's not wow factor moments that he's had this year. Man, a couple of games, I'm not saying he hasn't had his, had, had his moments where he made a really nice. I'm not saying that. But you don't come away from a game going, man, that guy's a – that guy is a generational player. He's not. He's not a generational player. He's not Mahomes. He's not Burrow. Like I said, you will find out. Because once they start paying him, and you don't have AJ and Devon, can you imagine Jalen Hurts? And I'll say this again to you. So if Jalen Hurts didn't have AJ Brown or Devontae Smith, you really think they'd be 16 and one with just Dallas Goddard and no Miles Sanders? That's what the guy in Kansas City has. He's got a rookie running back, no wideouts, and a tight end. That's all he has. That's all he has. And he won as many games as the Eagles, and he won his MVP. And he broke the single season. Yardage number, and he threw for 40 touchdowns, and he had a higher quarterback rating, and he had almost double the throws. That guy in Kansas City is a special player. He's the only reason I think that game could be close. He's the only reason. Because if you see Chad Henney, that means Hassan Reddick is going to win the MVP. Because... If you put it all together and Hassan Reddick wrecks that game too, like he did the NFC title game, they should rename the MVP award the Con Smythe Award because he was a force in the Giant game. He was a force in the 49er NFC title game, and he'll be a force in the Super Bowl if you see Chad Henney in that game. He's been a weapon. I couldn't have been more wrong about a player. Now, after the first seven weeks, I didn't see it. But you got to give Jonathan Gannon credit for that. He figured it out. We're efforting our friend Joe Theismann. Hopefully, we can catch up with him. If not, we got a ton of shit to hit on anyway. So, 31-17. I've been saying it for two weeks. Kansas City's gonna ha Kansas City's gonna have to show me they can run the ball and move the chains on. And again, that's why I asked you about this list, guys. I don't think the Eagle defense is overrated. I just don't think they've been really challenged by anybody this year. This game Sunday will validate it and how good they really are. You're playing the best guy in the league. And arguably the best coach, head coach, play caller in the league. Okay? It's not really a rip. The reason that a lot of people have their doubts about the Eagles going into this game is because of this list. Not me and what I'm saying. And because the quarterback hasn't played well in the postseason. He hasn't played well because he's injured, I think. He, he hasn't. This is the final test for so many questions that we had going into this season. This is finally, everything's going to be answered. Is the defense really who they are? Is the coordinator defensively really who he is? 
Is Gannon really good? And are guys like me and Seth just, again, are we just, okay? Is it, it, it is, is he really that good? Is Shane Steichen a good offensive coordinator? The Super Bowl is going to tell us a lot about Jalen Hurts. Okay? All the nonsense talk could be put to rest. Again, when I look at a list like this, you just heard me say, I got the Eagles winning 31-17. But when you look at a list like this, I think some of those numbers that the Eagle defense has are empty calories. And that's why it's only a two and a half point spread. It's less than a field goal. So it's really a pick em game. Okay? Basically, Vegas has this thing almost a pick em game. Anything under three? That's that that's margin of error kind of stuff. So this is like a pick 'em. Heavy money's coming in on Kansas City. Okay. I just I want to see the Eagles are a knockout puncher. The Chiefs are a jabber. I'll always go with the knockout team, the knockout boxer. Because he can end a fight at any moment. The jabber can't. But here's the thing about Kansas City. You get a big lead on them, don't go to sleep on them. They will come back on you. We've seen them do this. That's all. Look, and I know some of you are like, Seals, you're shitting on. I'm not shitting on the defense. I'm pointing out what. They've done this is the Philadelphia Eagle resume since week five. Okay, this is the Philly E. This is the Philly defense. Like, watch this. 49ers as a group. It's a great roster. What's Hassan Reddick wrecked the quarterback? Josh Johnson and Christian McCaffrey were the quarterbacks. They couldn't throw a pass. Game was over. I tweeted out immediately. That thing was over. As soon as Purdy went out, it was over. Daniel Jones. So the Giants are going to give Daniel Jones 35 million. Name me a wide receiver on that team is worth the shit. I mean, they must have the worst collection of wideouts of any team in the league. There's not a redeeming guy in that group. Tight end's kind of good, I guess. You're going to give Daniel Jones $35 million? Jesus, criminy. That means you're going to let Saquon Barkley walk? <laughs> okay. I guess. Davis Webb? Who, I don't even know who he is. Andy Dalton? Andy Dalton still playing? Dak torched you, put 40 on you, and 78 completion percentage. That's after a pick six. Dak crushed that defense. Did he not? Or wait. Remember something. Gardner Minshew doesn't play defense. I this is going to be a very Hertz didn't play. Dak didn't play Hertz. I know he played your defense and put 40 on it. I know, Mask. He didn't play Hertz. He played that defense and worked it. You know, I I I, I want to throw this at people here because, and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna say this one more time: Is Super Bowl experience overrated, and is it a media thing? Because to me, when I watched that Eagle team in 2017, out coach Bill Belichick with a backup quarterback and Doug Peterson, and they took the Patriots to the woodshed. I I I don't I mean. Where was the advantage? Here's some, and, and, and I talked to Jimmy Johnson last night. Jimmy Johnson played that Buffalo team. They put 50 points on a team that had been in numerous Super Bowls. So how about a guy that has played in a couple Super Bowls and a guy who has won a Super Bowl? And again, I actually thought the team that Joe Theismann had the following year 
I actually thought that team was better than the one that won the Super Bowl. And let's get to the former 